What is going on YouTube? One on the XRM here. Welcome to the channel. We're at Arizona Kawasaki KTM Triumph of Tucson. Again, because they have this awesome bike. My wife got to ride this Thruxton. And this video is going to be a two-parter. I'm going to do my first impression a little bit differently. So the first video, this video actually, is going to be about the deep dive of it. The electronics that are in it. Everything this bike has that is really cool to the rider that's new. The next video is going to be about the riding impression, how I felt while riding it, and that's going to be the first impression part of this video. So stay tuned, there's two parts. This first one's going to be awesome, so is the second one. We're now out here with this beautiful 2021 ZX-10R. This black is absolutely gorgeous, but we're going to do a deep dive, and in this video, we're going to talk about the little controversial things like this guy right here. We're going to go over the electronics and some of the other cool little knickknacks I found while diving into the details of this bike. So we're gonna start out with the front of this bike. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people think it looks weird. It's actually grown on me. The more and more I looked at it, the more and more I liked it. You know, it's got a lot of accents from the H2 built into this thing, but to me, honestly, it looks like a koala bear. <laughs> a really, really mean, angry koala bear hopped up on eucalyptus, and it is just gorgeous. Now, when you look at the front end, you notice the big old opening here. The other thing that's really cool is this actually has integrated winglets. This is what these guys are for. Supposedly, it adds 17% more downforce. I don't know, I definitely didn't notice anything. I wasn't going anywhere near the speed. This definitely makes it stand apart, and I love the front end of this bike. Now, at the heartbeat of this bike is an inline for 998cc motor that puts out around 200 horsepower and about 84 foot-pounds of torque, or 114 nanometers. All right, so obviously we want to hear this motor, and this is what it sounds like, stop. Pretty clean and nice. See how easy that throttle was? Nice and smooth. Very nice sounding bike that's completely stock. But that's actually not the coolest part about this bike. It's the valves that I love about it. They're electronic valves that this motorcycle has. And what that allows this bike to do is really modulate how the throttle is applied. And it makes this engine just buttery smooth. Now while the motor is amazing, it's the electronics that are inside this motorcycle that really blow me away, especially for the price point. Now what this bike contains is a Bosch IMU and what Kawasaki calls the six degrees of freedom. What that really means is that this thing moves in 3D space in six different axes. Other bikes call them a six axis IMU, six degrees of freedom, same difference. Now what does it really mean to have six degrees of freedom? Well, when you're riding, you're going in one plane. When you're braking and turning, you're actually changing your pitch and you're adding a roll into there. So that's where the six axis or six degrees of freedom really come into play. They can really sense what this motor is doing, what this bike's doing and the electronics adjust for your inputs. It doesn't orient itself just on a horizontal plane. It actually calibrates to the tarmac that it's on. Say you're in a turn that's off camber, the bike will notice that, the IMU will sense that, and it'll adjust accordingly based off of where the bike's actually at in that six degrees of freedom, in that 3D space, which is really, really sophisticated stuff that's on a bike that's 17,000 or 16,900, which blows me away. So again, I was talking about going to the deep dive, so let's do that right now. You see the screen, it's in white. If you hit the reset button over here, it goes to black and it looks really cool. Honestly, it's probably one of my favorite settings. Even during the day, it looks great. If you look up in the top left corner, you see it says sport. Now, none of these rider modes are really customizable. They're kind of you know, preset. Once you set them there, that's what they are. Sport mode, everything's preset for you. It's a little more aggressive. It's definitely meant for hard riding or track riding, if you will, for those that don't really know how to set up their bike. Kawasaki does a pretty good job right out of the box for you. you. Go to the next setting, which is road, and you have to hit the mode down button. By hit it, I mean hold it. It takes a little bit of time for the change. In road mode, it's everyday riding. The throttle response isn't quite as choppy. It's not quite as aggressive when you get on it. It's for riding around town, not so much on the canyons or at the track. It's definitely more laid back. It's kind of interesting. You kind of tailor back this really beast of a motor. Hold mode down again. You get into rain mode, self-explanatory, less power. Now let's go into the interesting part about this. There's four rider modes that you can custom set, which I really like. So to turn that on, you have to hold select. It goes into the vehicle setting, hit select again. You kind of scroll down through this, kind of scroll down through the screen, see a shift lamp, you can change what the, this little light right here. 
you don't want that to come on at various times or you want it to set up to like 14,000 RPM, you can right there. KQS is quick shifter, Kawasaki quick shifter, Kawasaki engine braking control, KLCM is Kawasaki launch control. It's really cool. But you want to go down this rider mode, and from rider mode, you turn it on or off. It comes from the factory off, so we'll turn it on real quick. Hit select, hit return again, and return again. Now you're on to the rider one mode. Again, you can scale it to however you want, rider one, two, three, or four. So if you want to customize rider one mode, hit select. And from there, you can choose your power. You see it's already at F, which is full power. Your tracks control is going to be at two, which is a little less intervening when you ride. And you can change that by hitting select and change your power mode. So you don't want it necessarily to be full power. You want to set up a rider mode for friends that are a little bit of hooligans. Just turn that power down a little bit. Don't tell them that the power is low. Just let them jump on rider one because they think it's the best one. And you can change you know, the tracks control from here. And then hit apply, which again is select. Really easy. It's a little intuitive. The one thing I will note about this is it takes time for each one of these menus to change. Is that really a problem? No, but it says it can do it on the fly, and I'm not sure how much on the fly it really is because of the lag time it takes to change mode to mode. Something kind of interesting and quirky about this dash in the electronics that are in this bike is it has an eco mode, or an eco light, I should say, because the mode isn't actually real. It just says eco. It doesn't actually do anything to the motor. It doesn't kill any cylinders. It just says, hey, you're not killing the environment, good for you. Eco. <laughs> Another really cool thing that the engineers did for the ZX-10R is they put a horizontal shock absorber in the back. What that does for the bike is actually a few things. First off, the geometry is a little bit better and it helps the back end stay flat when you accelerate. The other thing is because this is Euro 5, the primary canister for the exhaust is up underneath and it can be bigger down here. That way this silencer here is actually gonna be a lot smaller than what it would be had it been vertical and the primary had to come out this way. So it's kind of a really good design that these engineers came up with for Kawasaki to make not only the mass more centralized, but also make it aesthetically pleasing to see. And then obviously on the track, it's gonna be a beast because it's not gonna squat so much that you lose traction. So I hope you all enjoyed that deep dive into the Kawasaki ZX-10R. It is an amazing bike. It's got a ton of stuff on it, especially for the price point. I have to thank Arizona Kawasaki KTM Triumph of Tucson again for allowing me to ride this bike and setting things up for me. Again, Bruce, thank you very much. Stay tuned for the next video where I talk about the ride and the first impressions I actually got while being on this beast. With that, you all have a good one. I'm out.